Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Trader Merlin Show. It is your <clears throat> Trivia Tuesday afternoon edition. Sorry if I seem a little little slow today. It's uh, I was teaching a class all day. My voice is gone. Good to see you, Joe. You're a glutton for punishment. He was in there eight, 7 o'clock this morning. We talked from 7 to 1.30 doing crypto today. So uh, welcome, everyone. Should be a fun one today. As you saw from my graphic, um, I wanted to talk about this yesterday, at least give you the heads up that that uh, DWAC was going to convert to DJT today, which would be the birth of Donald Trump's new company. All right. So here's the graphic we got. Um, unfortunately, when you look at the graphic here today, we're show 889. I have Trump's big day. Um, I, I got to give a big thumbs down to uh, Mid Journey, a, a huge thumbs down to Mid Journey. I have pulled up pretty much every person you can think of creating graphics and AI um, from Jerome Powell, Elon Musk, you name it, I can bring up anybody. If I just type in the word Donald Trump, I get flagged on Mid Journey. I thought that was that's pretty ridiculous. Talk about censorship and, and issues there. Um, yeah, not good. Not good the way that worked. Anyway, <clears throat> as you guys know, you can't short it yet, Big Eb. Wait, will it, let me let me go through all this, and then we will have a. Um, oh, is it tomorrow? Oh, let me check, Lisa. I hope not. I'm I'm exhausted today. Let me real quickly check this one. See what my calendar is. It might have a session tomorrow. Um, no, I did not short it. And again, you'd have to wait till it's shortable. It's usually not shortable for the first 30 days. We'll see how that goes. But I wanted to run by some of the numbers by you guys first, just so you can kind of see, make up your own mind on it. Obviously, some people are huge Trump supporters. Some people are huge Trump haters. That's neither here nor there. It is it is what it is. Um, and that's not the focus of today's show is to bash or, you know, gloat about anything. It's just saying, let's let's look at the numbers and see is there opportunity to the upside or downside? What might that look like? So let's see. Today is March. Yeah. I have an XLT general session tomorrow at 1030. Didn't know that. Thanks for that, Lisa. <laughs> I, I got to go there. Okay. So tomorrow morning, I'll do another crypto session for you guys. All right. So we've been following the DWAC chart, DWAC. And I've been pretty critical of this and over the year because over the years, um, primarily, yeah, this, so they switched the ticker symbol. It, this shouldn't be this full length of a chart. Um, it's just going to be DJT. That's weird. That's that's really odd. Okay, so it does go back here. So DWAC chart officially changed to DJT. The ticker symbol will go um, will go forward on this one. Now, I didn't check options on this one. Oh, yeah, it's true. Yes, I, <clears throat> sorry. You can trade options against it, and we'll talk about that one in just a second. So here's DWAC, and of course, this was... Um, you know, you had the Capitol riots and then Trump got banned from all the platforms and he vowed to start his own thing. And of course, I think an opportunist group of individuals came to him and said, hey, we'll build it. We'll do everything. Just put your name on it and stamp on it, say it's yours. And Truth Social was born, which from my understanding, very few people are using Truth Social, uh, obviously compared to Twitter, a drop in the bucket. Now, I don't have the numbers here in front of me, but um, does anybody here use Truth Social? I'm just curious. Um, I looked at it. I was like, well, it's a, you're basically fragmenting the marketplace. Twitter has kind of everybody there, both sides of the aisle, whereas you're kind of bringing in one specific group to Truth Social. So, eh, I, I, not for me. I really don't like social media anyway. And I just, whatever platform is going to be the easiest, like, like, um, like um, Twitter. That's all I'll do. So I was making fun of it back here saying short him if you got him. This is a pure money grab in my in my opinion. That's what we were talking back here when it was up at 100 and something bucks. Like no way. No one was using it. It's going to fizzle out. And we did see it crash back down. Got down into the teens, right? You got down to a low point here back in June of last year of $12.45. And then, you know, we've really seen it just go absolutely gangbusters right now and surging higher and higher and higher. I mean, it... Technically, it looks awesome. It looks like a huge breakout. Fantastic. Great. Good. Let, let it let it do its thing. So let's look a little bit at some of the facts around the, um, the IPO itself and see what those numbers mean. Now, I've gone out to Yahoo Finance and the numbers was the numbers were really off. So uh, let me see if I can bring this one up for you here. The media reports that Donald Trump has 78. 79 million shares of this company out of 135 million. But watch this. If I go to DJT and I go to statistics, 
I'm confused here, and I definitely would love to have some clarity for you. But uh, you see here it says shares outstanding, 37.15 million. That that's all of them. Um, float right now is 29 million. So I'm curious as to which reporter, you know, because there were multiple reporters that that wrote out that he's got 79 million shares of this bad boy. And I thought, well, that, that seems a little fishy because it looks like there's only 37 million shares here, giving um, a valuation to DJT, which is now Trump Media and Technology, giving it a valuation of 2.15 billion. Okay, um, the numbers that I have seen is that there's 135 million shares of Truth Social, and I'll bring that up here. These are kind of two things that I, I pulled from different reports, although I gotta say, I'm a little sketchy on whether these numbers are are honest or not. I don't know. So I'll have to dig a little bit deeper. I wanted to do that this morning, but I was in class all day. So uh, right now, this is Trump's holding. So Trump has a 60% stake in Truth Social, and that equates to about 79 million shares out of 135. And he has a lot of incentive to get potentially more. Um, yeah, so what is the truth? Well, I don't know, Lisa. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure that one out. <clears throat> Um, 79 million at a, well, let's just bring up the, the share price here so you guys can see on the screen. We'll go 79 million and we'll times that by his current share price, which is 58.99. It's about a $4.6 billion windfall for Donald Trump. So when I said big day, I mean, this is probably the best business deal he's ever done in his life in a short window of time. He basically got a group of people to create a social media site, which is an exact copy of Twitter, all right? Um, an exact copy of Twitter, put Donald Trump's name on it to promote it and gave him 60% of it. I thought that was pretty, pretty interesting. So um, let's bring up Truth Social here just so you guys can check that one out. And if you look at it, here it is over here, hold on. I have to create an account and get it at app stores, etc. but I can't go to it just straight out. I got to to create an account to get in. I, I'm not going to create an account. I don't need to do that. Uh, but you notice the, the layout here looks exactly like Twitter. It's pretty much the exact same layout. I mean, honestly, they should get a plagiarism lawsuit against them from Twitter or X just because of uh, this is the exact same layout, look, feel, everything is the same. Anyway, um, some other stats we can look at here. So he has 60% stake in True Social, 79 million shares out of 135 million, which puts the valuation. Let me let me just get that number on here for you too, just so we can see what the total valuation is, because I think this is really important. There's 135 million shares total of this, times that by the current share price, which is 58.99. You now have a almost eight billion dollar valuation. Naum says the art of the deal. Hey, you know what? If, if anything, at a bare minimum, whether you, you hate the guy's guts or you love him to death, at a bare minimum, you got to look at him and go, that was a smart move because he put his name on this company. The only reason, the only reason that Truth Social has any legs to stand on and people going to it is because Donald Trump brought a lot of people to it. Although, uh, from what I've read, not a lot of people are using it, right? You make it right away. They're making the website um, intrusive because I have to have an app, I have to log in and create an account, whereas Twitter, I can just go and just start browsing around if I want, okay? So, not bad, um, considering that he's got a you know, $4.6 million windfall today, or sorry, $4.6 billion windfall today, bravo, you did well, maybe he can pay some of the fines that he owes now. So, more stats to look up. You're probably thinking, well, can't he sell this right away? Can't Trump just now, boom, back out of this and just unload it? No. Um, Per the IPO or the, the SPAC rules, he has a six-month lockup period. Now, here's where things get interesting. So he has a six-month lockup period. However, he can go to the board and ask for permission to sell some of his shares early. Conveniently enough, I think his son-in-law is on the board as well as several members from his past administration as president. Hmm. So... There's there's already some really questionable stuff going on with DWAC turning into DJT. The fact that he has so much of it is kind of a red flag. Uh, the fact that they're not being utilized that much is another red flag. But still, prices surged today. It was a giant day for True Social. Um, as you can see on this chart here, it says up 16%, but uh, you know, that's really pennies compared to where it was 
just a few weeks ago when it was down at $16.82. Uh, we hit an intraday high today on DWAC of $79.38. So all in all, fantastic day for him. He's loving it. And huge volume on the IPO. Okay. I say IPO. It's not really an IPO. The conversion into. Um, Andre says, so how does DJT make money advertising? Uh, they technically don't. So here are some of the facts of the stats that I have um, pulled from different sources. And again, I, I, I'm just finding misinformation. So the first one was that True Social had $5 million in sales. Okay. Let, let, let Everybody, let's take a step back. Business School 101. You guys tell me, when evaluating a business off of a sales number, what multiplier would you put on that? What multiplier would you guys say? I'm, I'm sure some people in here have bought businesses before, um, been involved in that. I, I'm going to leave it up to you. What multiplier do you take on a sales number and say, we'll give you, what, five times earnings, 10 times earnings? 50 times earnings? Mind you, this isn't even earnings. This is just sales. Just sales. So all the business income they have coming from sales, $5 million. Yet we just looked. We have a valuation. What did I say? $8 billion? Uh, so yeah, roughly $8 billion valuation right now. So right away, you've got to look at this and go, man, things are completely skewed here and overvalued. Now, again, I'm not being a hater on true social. I'm just saying you're a company that had $5 million in sales and now I've got $7.9 billion valuation. Mm. Okay. No. Let's, um, let's go one step further. So other, other numbers I've read is they've got tens of millions of losses since 2021. Of course, that might be acquisition and marketing and trying to get stuff out there. But this is the real kicker here. Reddit, which just did its IPO, right? Reddit was a... Started off as a pretty successful IPO. It's been out for four days now. They were valued at $9 billion. So right now, a billion dollars more than, than uh, DJT, True Social, DWAC, whatever you want to call it. But they made $800 million in sales last year. So Truth Social made $5 million in sales. Reddit made eight hundred. million, yet they're roughly the same price, right? They're roughly the same valuation. Here is Reddit... Um, Reddit's price chart. You know, they have a massive community. They've got a pretty cool little niche market. They've they've got some stuff going on there and they're selling. So based off these numbers, if I had to choose between the two companies, right away I would look at this and say either I'm going to try to buy DJT at an incredible um, discount because they only have 5 million in sales or I'm looking to short it if it's overvalued. Okay? So those numbers really kind of crazy um, the way they they stagger like this now a couple other little pieces i want to add djt was trump hotels and casino resorts in 1990 so this ticker symbol has been used before by donald trump at that moment in time in 1996 djt was valued at 800 million dollars they filed for bankruptcy in 2004 so I, I threw that out there just because there seems to be this egotistical um, naming convention for Donald Trump where he's like, I got to have DJT. I got to put my name on it. And bravo for making so much money today. The key is, can you cash out? And, and we'll see if he's able to cash out. Now, objectively, if I look at this and say investment opportunity, right? Love him or hate him, whatever your opinion is, I don't care. It's... Is there money to be made here? And I, I did catch a screenshot. I don't know if you guys saw bar chart today. Let me see if I can uh, bring this one up. I, I said I didn't have a lot of time to prepare here. But bar chart had a really interesting um, graphic up today that talked. It said more than 15,000 Digital World Acquisition Corp. April, $2.50 strikes um, puts were purchased today or traded, making this option the highest open interest. Um, hedge or some speculators betting on 95% collapse in DWAX price. I would absolutely 100% put myself in that category. I would put myself as this thing is going to absolutely implode. D, J, T. Okay. Um, correct. 
Well, I don't know if they're losing money, but uh, they did have, you know, I'm not sure on that one, Tom. But let's go up to the top here. Um, look at it as a defensive fund. Would a lot of Americans contribute to a fund to stop a kangaroo court? Mm, 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 I don't know. Don't make rich people not make money. Hence, they go pay no taxes with very low. Correct. Yep. Um, and knowing the tax code allows you to kind of circumvent a lot of that. So let's go back to the price charts here, which to me are what the most telling piece is. Keep in mind that this was a $10 SPAC, right? So you had a $10 valuation on this SPAC. And then all of a sudden the lofty valuations for two socials started to come in and now it's way above their, um, their numbers. And unfortunately, I don't have the, the earnings. It would be nice if I clicked down here and see the um, earnings pop up. But we are currently right here at uh, 57.99. That's what we closed at. It's up 3% in the after hour session. So someone bought the $2.50 strikes, which I think is a bit of a stretch. Now, I don't think it's gonna get to 250. Let's put that on the screen right here so we can see that and I'll stretch it out. Now, I don't believe it's going to get to 250 anytime soon. However, um, do I think it's going to close this gap and drift significantly lower? I do. I think it's completely overvalued. I think that as soon as Donald Trump and, and his historical track record, track record will probably get rid of this as quickly as possible. Um, you know, do we get down to that $17 price tag it was at? Yeah. I'm willing to bet, and I'll take a wager on this one if someone would like, that within 30 days, within 30 days, we will be below $18 on DWAC. 30 days. Now, I didn't look at the option chain. I'm willing to bet you that that's uh, extreme premium right now for these options. Let me put that there. Um, let's see. I'll put this on here. 18. Come on. I want to do $18 even. There you go. So I'm going to measure out 30 days here just so I have. Uh, let's go for 30 days. You guys think I'm crazy? Let me, let me just say chat's a little bit delayed here. So hold on. So when can you short it? Well, you can't short the stock technically until uh, 30 days after. And it really depends on one, but right now it should be 30 days after. Uh, but you can buy the puts. Apparently the option market's already been there because DWAC has been around a while. So today being uh, March 26th, let me go to April 26th. All right, there we go. So that's where I think we will be. I think that we're gonna be under $18 at some point between now and the next 30 days. Anybody want to take that bet? 40 chess move by Donald Trump as a donation to 45. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, Tom, he could be playing all kinds of games, all kinds of games. Uh, legit way to contribute to his campaign. Um, you know, Larry, I'm not sure about that. That's an interesting point. He may actually use this money for his campaign, although he'll probably, he's done this before where he will, solicit all of his followers for money even though he has money and try to get them to pony up which they have done plenty of money over the time but um you know what is the maximum contribution that you can give to a candidate does he go to truth social and pay out all of his ex executives and have them donate i don't know uh, not a bad idea bottom line is the guy's making a boatload of money off of this and what i feel bad for is i feel bad for the his followers to some extent, those that are that are buying into the hype that's been created around True Social. I I personally just don't see its success happening. There, there's too many other platforms out there. You're not gonna start up a, a knockoff Twitter that's behind a firewall that I have to register for and expect it to just blow up and, and have fantastic growth. You need to open that up and make it easy for people to use it. And maybe they do do that in the future. So what'll probably happen here is a lot of people are gonna have kind of that diamond hands thing that they had with uh, Wall Street bets, um, you know, when they were at a GameStop and AMC. And most likely people jumped on this thing because of hype and talk track and comments made by President Trump himself. I'm willing to bet any amount of money that this will probably be the peak for True Social. I don't, I don't see it going much higher. Could it? Sure. Um, but as soon as that selling starts to come in, as soon as those I mean, you saw have heavy, heavy options trades today. That was pretty interesting. I'll take that bet. I need some more shark glasses. <laughs> I still owe you a beer somewhere, Mike. Um, he uses campaign money to pay his lawyers. That might be. You know, I try to stay out of the politics side of things. I hate politics. Um, you can give a lot of money to the super PACs. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I don't know. I, I Again, I'm not a political person. I, I personally hate politics. I think it's dirty business, and I think most of them don't do the jobs they were supposed to do. So that, that's not a, a Democrat or Republican statement. That's just trading period. But, um, the, you know, that individual who, who bought those puts today, they're obviously trying to get deep, 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 deep out of the money. You know, they probably bought these for pennies. No big deal. But it doesn't have to get to 250 You know, if this thing goes from 57 call it $58, down to 18 within 30 days, um, well, actually, those those April puts, I don't know which, t which time he bought. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm going to have to look at that one, Lisa. I don't have an account on this one. Um, it says, uh, I looked at the ticker for uh, on TOS, and it says it has no options. Did you look at DWAC? Check out DWAC um, or DJT. Probably DWAC. So, you know, again, uh, this may have some legs to it, but personally, in my experience, no. And a lot of this, to me, is being driven off of hype and uh, just pump it. It'll be pumping down. D Lord, GDT is the ticker and there are options. Okay. I haven't looked it up. I'll probably look it up later when I have some time after I take a nap. I'm tired. I got trivia tonight as well. Take dog to the vet. Trivia. It was a busy day. So... I wanted just to share this with everybody because I'm getting, you know, I'm getting both sides. I'm getting people like, man, this is a brilliant move. What an amazing trade. And I'm also getting, you know, what a joke, da, da, da. Um, look, it's all opportunity. If the premium for the puts to go directionally is, is um, if the premium for the puts is decent, I may actually buy puts on this one, but you, you got to think it's going to be extremely elevated right now. Hmm. DWAC has no options either. Interesting. <laughs> hey, good to see you, Rob. So we'll see. Uh, Mike, we're gonna have, it's going to be a two-beer night. Uh, well, maybe I cancel out my beer. You know, I'll cancel out that beer if, I, if uh, I win this one. But by April 26th, this thing will be below 18 bucks. I have a feeling in probably in a few days, you'll see it really start to sell off. Because all the hype has been around it finally going public, and now it's done it. Now what? All right, now what are you going to do? What's going to happen from this point? Personally, I think you're going to see a, a, a significant correction here. Okay, but we'll have to see. Uh, now it has options. Um, how much were the 250s? Uh, he didn't say what strike in that email or in that um, article or the tweet from Bar Chart. I did not see what the premium was for that one. He just says the April, it's, I'm assuming it's going to be the monthlies. Uh, check out the April two, 250 strike puts. My guess is they're trading pennies on the dollar. And if this thing does have a big fall, that will be a pretty big windfall. Um, I may I may look at that myself. We may see what happens tomorrow here. Hopefully it runs up. Uh, April April expiration, Lisa. DWAC is no longer traded, right, Mike? This the ticker symbol switches over. So if you notice here at the top of my screen, you can see it says Digital World Acquisition Corp. That's the old name. The ticker symbol now is DJT, and it's Donald uh, Trump Media and Technology Group. I think is what they're calling it. So yeah, DJ DWAC was the SPAC. One to two cents. I mean, so you think about that. Think about that for a second. You could go out and buy those puts for the 250 strike for one penny. So you buy a couple hundred of those, right? If someone will sell them to you. That's just crazy. So you buy a couple hundred of those. Um, and it doesn't have to fall to 250. I mean, if this thing just in, in a, let's say in a one week period, it falls 30%. You'll see the, the premium spike on those 250s. Now, He's so far out of the money on that one. I, I think that's kind of a crazy, a crazy strike to go. I wouldn't have gone that far out because it's unrealistic that it's going to get down there. I mean, you're essentially betting this thing's going to lose all its value in. Is it ninety five percent slide? I don't, I don't see that happening. I don't. It, it is the most active strike price. That's kind of crazy. Yep. Uh, we'll see. I, I'm definitely in the camp. Uh, aggressively in the camp that this thing is headed for a pretty significant slide. I'm going to leave this chart right here. I'm also um, I'm going to type on the screen. But Mike took the bet. You, you, you got it. Oh, come on. Let me get it up there. Come on. I'll put it right here. Mike took the bet. There you go, Mike. You're on the screen. We're going to visit this one as we get to April 26th. Now, again, I do not think it's going to 250. I think over time it probably will as it runs out of money because it just doesn't have the revenue generation. I mean, if you have $5 million in sales, it's going to cost a lot more than that, uh, as Tom points out, after, after all the operation expenses and salaries being paid out. 
uh, you know, we'll probably do doing go in the red here pretty quickly but you'll start to see uh their earnings getting reported now that it's a publicly traded company which will be great i don't think 250 now i think maybe in a couple years it'll go under 250 and go under bankrupt totally but right now uh, i do think under 18 dollars the next 30 days is, is a safe safe wager for myself there you go i'll take that bet so uh for those of you who are long dwac be careful have some stop loss in place could be a wild wild ride here all right um i'm gonna stop there uh, I'm going to run through our markets here, do a little bit of a quick recap, and then wrap up for a 30-minute show, right? Okay. Let's go to uh, a little bit shorter version today just because I'm exhausted, and I'm going to bring in, start things off with Bitcoin. So obviously, the last couple days have been fantastic. Oh, hold on before I go there. Uh, how do we know the guy was not selling naked puts at 250? We don't, Mike. I don't know. Uh, well, you can't short it at that strike, so as close as you can get to shorting. Yeah, the closest you can get to shorting is buying puts, right? <clears throat> so Bitcoin on the day, we had, um, it was looking pretty decent for a while and then all of a sudden started to fall, not fall apart, but just started to creep back down. We actually eclipsed yesterday's high briefly today, but all in all, I feel okay with Bitcoin. You know, it's still hovering right around that 69,000 mark. We're at 69,440 right now. So down 2.3%. Um, let's look at the uh, five minute here. Oop. There's your five minute. All right, so we went drifting lower today, but not, nothing to be overly worried about. Crude oil had a bit of a pullback, 0.4%. Let's go to our daily here. Again, on yesterday's show, I was expressing my overt bullishness long term. And I got to give a shout out to um, Ed up in San Jose. He sent an email response. He, he listens to the uh, archive recordings of this one. He doesn't watch live at all. He's, just, he's, he's afraid to watch live. No, I'm kidding. Um, Ed made a really good point. You know, I asked yesterday, are we going to run out of oil? And all things being equal, you could say yes, but the reality is we'll never run out of oil because the natural pricing mechanisms, supply and demand mechanisms, uh, your, your school of Austrian economics would also say this, that at a certain point, if oil starts to run low, right? Let's say it starts to run low. Because supply is shrinking, the price of oil will get cost prohibitive. And there will come a point where we all just look at it and go, it's not worth driving a car anymore. I'd rather there'll be some other transportation system that comes up that's going to be more efficient. So we'll never run out of oil. It's never going to go to zero that there's no more oil on the earth left because the, the price will just get so high that you stop using your petroleum based transportation. Um, when you look at you know the Austrian School of Economics, one of the comments is the cure for a high price is a higher price. And so ultimately, if supply starts to run low, which we have a long time before that really becomes an issue, um, the price of oil will surge higher and higher and higher to ultimately, it's just cost prohibited, prohibitive for us to be driving petroleum based vehicles. And, and that is why, one of the reasons why I am bullish on oil long term. And I stated that yesterday. Uh, again, I don't think that that's going to happen this year or next year. But if you're a long term person, um, it'd be nice if there was a not degrading way to buy long oil. You could use USO, but because that's rolled over with futures contracts, you can get contango and backwardation on that one, and it, it degrades over time. Uh, it would be much better um, if you could actually just like buy oil and just hold it for years because for the next 100 years or so, we'll probably be okay. Pass on to your grandkids this oil holding, and oil will probably get more and more expensive over time. So, yeah, you were correct, Ed, on that statement that uh, we're ne we'll never run out of oil. I mean, it could get to the point where it's, a thousand bucks a barrel and people are like forget that i'm not going to spend sixty dollars a gallon for gas that's some heck of, heck of high inflation so great answer on that one uh let's see you can't uh, i got that one there <laughs> that's a funny one margaret i like that uh there are good options besides oil like ethanol hydrogen correct that's why I was joking yesterday when I said something. You could have a, like a micro nuclear reactor in your vehicle, just a small little one. What if we got to the point where that technology was sound? And just a, you know, something the size of a, a Coke can could power your car for its entire life, 100 years of, of power for your vehicle. You know, not, not outside the realm of possibility, but certainly when you if you have oil at 1,000 bucks a barrel, uh, that would push that discussion and finding alternative ways to power your vehicle. So there we go. Thanks, Big Ed for the big. Uh, thanks, Ed, for the comment. All right, I'm gonna keep moving up the ladder here. Nasdaq 100, slow rollover today. Does look 
you know, bearish, but I, I still, I got to go with that bigger uptrend. This might be an opportunity to buy that pullback. You do have a level right around 18,063 um, that I would expect if it did pull back, that's probably where it's going to head back down to. S&P 500 on the day down 0.25%. Again, looking fantastic. I, you can't you can't say anything negative about this other than it's had three negative days, but still looking fantastic for the S&P. Stay long. Um, Russell 2000, which had that nice little breakout a couple days ago on last Thursday and, and kind of given that one back here, still looks good, still higher highs, higher lows. So all in all, still bullish on Russell. Gold today, 0 0.04. It had it was a, a nice green candle today, but at the end of the day, ended down, um, just, sorry, just slightly up, excuse me, for uh, the gold futures. So Nice about face. You can bring up that intraday chart to see that big swing there. You had a nice surge up this morning, and then all of a sudden came ripping back down as the markets opened up. All right, dollar index. Let me go back to my daily here, bring up the Dixie. Still stuck in a sideways. I said I'm not going to talk about this till it gets out of that range, so we will move on to the best performer of the day, which actually isn't because it just rolled over. Uh, the 10-year right now showing up 0.09% for the day. All right, let me go to a couple questions here. Um, Horses will be in demand. Hey, I like horses. As long as you don't have a long way to go. Uh, tech, technician JD says, what's your thoughts on Hood? I've always hated Hood, um, other than the song by Fish. But the chart looks great. You know, we talked a while back. Uh, this is back here in 2021, I think, um, on the reason to stay short Hood because of their new pricing model. And if the regulators did away with payment for order flow, then these guys were dead in the water. Instead, they've turned the corner and I'm not sure where the money's coming from. Uh, at this point, you know, you've broken out and regardless of my disdain for Robinhood and how they make their money and steal from customers, in my opinion, that chart looks damn good. Um, at this point right now, uh, what do you say you have? You have, I've got some 18 calls sold uh, for this Thursday. I'm losing right now, 18. Uh, I certainly wouldn't go short on this one. I, personally, I wouldn't make a trade on this one right now. I'd wait for a pullback to buy into it. Do I think it gets down below 18 by Thursday? Whoo, man. Uh, let me look at the volume here. You've got money just pouring into this thing, obviously. You, based off today's little candle, I mean, that does look like a hesitation candle after a pretty big rally up. Uh, is there a chance it's going to get down below 18? Absolutely. However, you got to think that's a decent percentage swing, and you'd have to get all the way down to... You're looking at a 6% slide uh, in the next two days to get there. Uh, I have to say, I don't think so. I mean, I do think a pullback is coming, but by t by Tuesday, Thursday, I don't see it dropping, you know, almost 7% to get you back in the money. So um, you sold the calls on it. Are they naked? You might, you might be in a little bit of trouble there. They covered calls. Either way, you know, Robin Hood... Right now, I, I would be waiting for the pullback here to buy into this one. If you were thinking about it, I personally, I wouldn't touch Robin Hood. Just, just me. Uh, didn't trade station Robin Hood's model. Uh, I saw something about free trades now, and they, well, yeah, they they were basically doing, um, they were basically charging, making some money with their platform as well to offset some of the cost. But most platforms are just doing a payment for order flow model. Most platforms are selling customer order flow. Um, unless they got a broker dealer on their own side and then they just trade against your order flow. So the whole industry is pretty much stacked against the retail investor. Oh, okay. So these are covered calls. So basically your shares will get taken away from you if that's what happens. Eh, not the, it's not the worst thing that could happen. Adopt Robinhood's model. Sorry, I missed that. No worries. Um, I don't know if TradeStation adopted it. Do they use that? I mean, because TradeStation was around a lot longer than Robinhood. Robinhood is a baby compared to trade station so it's just simply the model um with trade station you know you have the option if you're doing direct access you can route your own order flow so therefore you're going to circumvent that payment for order flow by going direct and therefore you're paying for that platform to get that feature and functionality in it so i'm still not a fan of robin hood i still think uh, they're they're kind of a sucker's bet exchange they're trading against your order flow and selling or sorry selling your order flow and blatant about it so Oh, but it's free. It's free. Everybody's free nowadays. But yeah, um, impressive move. I wouldn't have been in it. It looks pretty damn good. I got to say that. Um, 
Larry M says, Merck news up nicely in after hours. Uh, let's go to the earnings calendar. I could have sworn I saw that Merck was on that list. So one sec as I bring that one up here and look at the earnings calendar. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, no, not Merck, but McCormick was on the list today. Let's check out Merck. You can probably bring up the news on it and find out. I don't trade any drug stocks, but I'll... Uh, yeah, up after hours, 4.96%. 4 Did they report do anything earnings? Merck shares rise after FDA approval of Win Rin River. Win River. So they got a drug approval and it popped them 5%. So that, that's why you got your, your pop up after hours. Nah. Sell some puts? Nah. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. I don't like Robin Hood. You know, the thing with me, Margaret, is like if I'm going to be selling puts, it's something that I want to own. I don't want to own Robin Hood. Even though I know the chart looks great, I just I just don't like the Robin Hood. It's like if you have someone who is is just generally a bad person, do you want him around? I, I I don't I don't like Robin Hood. I don't like I don't like the model. I think that it's it's a hoodwink. It basically, in my opinion, it's it's giving people the illusion that you're a professional trader and that you're now an active trader and you're in the markets. Yeah, yeah, good for you. And bottom line is, you already are at a disadvantage because you're using their services. Yeah, I, I don't I don't like that. Doesn't doesn't sit with me, so I uh, move on. Um, yeah, I know. I got. I didn't realize, Brian. I just I just realized today that I have a, an XLT general session to money. That's true. That's true, Margaret. And that that's that's the ultimate truth. Money is money. Yeah. Um, but as you could tell by my comments, there there's an emotional attachment to me. I have a disdain for Robinhood, so I'm just not going to trade it. And, and, and that's fine if someone does sell some puts on this. That's fine. Uh, for, it's just not for me. If I definitely have an attachment to something, I want to not, I want to move away from it um, and not put myself in there. Yes, it does. And it's a gateway. It's a gateway for people into this market, um, which is fine. You know, it, it is fine. I just, I don't know. I think if people were smarter, they would go with a better firm that offers better resources, not just customer support, but also trading applications um, that would allow you to do negotiate with the markets with limit orders that are not filled at the ask to buy, limit orders that would actually be filled at the bid side to buy. <laughs> thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, I definitely have my opinions. I definitely am stubborn uh, when it comes to markets. And I know that if I have a, a real positive, overtly positive or overtly, overtly negative opinion about something, it can get me into trouble. Obviously, with crypto, I'm overtly positive, um, and I'm okay being long those right now. Um, things may change once we get regulation put in. After the halving, we'll see all that goes. But yeah, anytime you have get you fired up, you should move away from it. Again, that's why I don't trade drug stocks. That's why I don't trade Apple. Uh, Cisco even has a, an emotional string for me that I haven't traded Cisco since 2001. It's been 23 years I haven't touched Cisco shares. Apple's 25 years. It's been a long time. Okay, let's bring up that economic calendar here and earnings calendar to show you what's cooking for tomorrow. So one sec here as I bring those up. I'm still trying to convince Elon to buy Hood and roll it into X. Now that would be good. That I think could happen. Right? You buy this platform that's kind of struggling, although the chart says it's not struggling, and then incorporate that and you immediately have a financial portal. Elon could definitely do that. Absolutely. Um, all right, let's go here to your economic calendar. Let's talk about what happened Tuesday with that Case Shiller Composite 20 Home Price Index numbers. Came out right in line with expectations, so no big deal there. You did see some positive sign with durable goods orders. Again, these are things that last a long time, TVs, refrigerators. Both the durable uh, goods orders and the core higher than expectations. So that's a good piece of economic data. You also saw your HPI data drop, which is interesting. Now, HPI, if you don't know, that is uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. That's the purchase price of homes with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac backed loans that dropped. So you saw prices of those loans uh, declining, although the case shiller was right in line with expectations. So tomorrow, you guys have crude oil inventories for our U.S. markets, and that's pretty much it. You've got an FOMC member speaking at 3 p.m. tomorrow. That's going to be member Waller. Uh, other than that, I don't see a lot of really important stuff here happening for the U.S. markets. Now, on the earnings front, let's go and click on our Wednesday list here. 
You have uh, Tencent, Carnival Cruise Lines. Really nothing exciting tomorrow. So a quiet day for anybody looking at the earnings calendar. You'll notice that there's there's a lot of international companies here, but they don't tell you when they're going to report. So I, I generally don't bring those up here. Uh, most of the time when you see a company with five letters in their name, they're typically going to be an international company. But uh, that's pretty much it. All right. That's my lucky day. I got out of here in under 45 minutes. First time in a long time. So that's it. Um, congratulations to anybody here who has the uh, DJT shares long. If, it, if I were you, I would sell that lock in my profit for sure on DWAC. I think you'll see some uh, downside move over the next week or so, and that could be pretty pretty fast, um, especially keep your, your ear on the media. I will watch this one because I'm, I would not be surprised to see Donald Trump actually file those applications to sell his shares earlier with his board of directors, which can grant that. And again, his son-in-law is on the board of directors as well as some... Um, appointees to his previous cabinet so we'll see if that pans out if that does happen that'll just spur even more selling much quicker so that's your show for today i have a couple other things i want to get to here on the program but i need some time to prepare and i've, I've been really busy with just classes and all kinds of stuff and creation so uh sorry if it's not the longest show today and my enthusiasm level is a little bit lower than normal because i am exhausted i'm about to go take a nap so i hope you guys had a good day enjoy send your comments questions feedback to trader merlin at gmail.com or put your comment down below any youtube video and i will see you guys tomorrow take care